Hello, and welcome to Tuesdays with Thomas. My name is Thomas Douglas, and I'm the artistic director of the Bach Choir of Pittsburgh. While we were all quarantined and staying at home, we wanted to do our very best to stay creative and informative. Each week, I will be bringing you a video cast of one of the pieces from our past season. We'll talk about it a little more in depth, actually listen to it, and we'll follow it up and end with a question and answer time. I hope you enjoy. The composition that we'll study today is called Tell Me Where Is Fancy Bread, written by Matthew Harris. Matthew is a composer teaching on the faculty at Brooklyn College. He studied at the Juilliard School and at the New England Conservatory of Music. Under the terms of her father's will, Portia must marry the man who selects correctly from among three chests or caskets, one each of gold, silver, and lead. At this point in the play, The Merchant of Venice, Act Three, Scene Two, two suitors have already chosen incorrectly and Portia begs Bassanio to postpone choosing from among the caskets, for according to the rules of the lottery, he must leave immediately if he fails, and she has fallen in love with him. Bassanio, however, decides to accept the challenge as he wants to marry her. He rejects the gold and silver casket and opts for the casket of lead. Inside, he finds Portia's picture and a written message confirming that he has won her father's consent. This song is performed not by any character in particular, presumably a household servant of Portia's or some other, other bystander may perform the song. The words, of course, are supposed to provide Bassanio with clues to the correct answer as they all rhyme with the word lead. The music in this scene heightens the dramatic tension making the decision-making process seem longer than it actually is, but keeping the audience's attention engaged while most of the real action is taking place in Bassanio's head and in the mind of the audience. So here are the lyrics. Tell me where is fancy bread, or tell me where, do, where does love or desire or infatuation start? Is it in the heart or in the head? How begot, how nourished, or mean, meaning how is it created or how is it sustained? Reply, reply, or answer me, answer me. So we see the rhyme uh, of lead for the lead casket, lead, bread, head, nourished. The, then the poem goes on to say, it is engendered in the eyes. It starts with the eyes, with gazing fed and fancy dyes, sustained by gazing, and desire dies very young. In the cradle where it lies, let us all ring fancy's knell. Let us all mourn our dead desire. Ding dong, ding dong. Let's listen to the piece.
Our first question comes from Sandy on the South Side. She says, how do you pick your music for each season? Well, um, it's different every time. And what happens is um, I try to pay attention to every conversation and in every situation that I have. And I listen to what people are talking about. I listen to the radio, I hear music, and sometimes I'll just get an idea of a season that would make sense for us. I've had ideas stored away in my head for years and years, and many times the spark of a conversation will ignite that. This year, our season was called Daydreams and Nightmares. And I thought of, um, before we even got the title of it, I was thinking about literature and literary geniuses and how many people have put music to the writing of Shakespeare and Langston Hughes and how Mary Shelley was a literary genius who had written Frankenstein and how could we involve that also. So we came up with this season called Daydreams and Nightmares, but it's basically by listening and then getting together a group of people to brainstorm and strategize about how the season may unfold. Next, from Milton and Cranberry. Why do you rarely perform in the same location? <laughs> we are uh, musical gypsies in that way. We travel from different, from place to place. I think it's our uh, d deep desire to uh, bring together the communities of Pittsburgh, to reach out into all of the communities. And we found that as we travel to different locations, we attract different members of new audiences. And we also try to be site specific for the music that we're doing. Uh, for instance, when we have done Messiah in space, meaning a, a grand space, we use the St. Agnes Hall. Uh, so we try to uh, marry the location with the music and the performance, always endeavoring to reach out to the communities of Pittsburgh. So thank you for these questions. And if you have more questions, you can also go to our Facebook page, Bach Choir Pittsburgh. Send in your questions and I'll um, take a couple each week. Thank you for being here. Tuesdays with Thomas. Bye-bye.